All right, let's maintenance this pig. The oil drain is way up in there, but it looks like they give you this nice little trough for it all to run down. Now, just checking the oil on the stick, it looks very, well, it's the blackest oil I've ever seen in a gasoline engine. So let's just see what we've got going on here. Oh, and I already loosened the right drain bolt for theatrics. Do you hear those things hit the bottom of the pan? I hope that was just like rocks and crap that was stuck. This is some of the smelliest. Like, honestly, this is dark. That's dark for a diesel. Yep, she's canister type. Hopefully, it's preserved some numbers. So that I can get a new one. How chunky is this guy? Yeah, that's thick. Here's one reason to like canister oil filters. Usually after some wiping, you can at least get a part number. But now this thing's kind of odd. I mean, it's got an offset hole. Um, this hole looks like it's been modified. So I don't know. Let's go run some numbers and see what the hell, what we got here. And if we can get a new one. Okay, folks, we're back out here today. If you'll remember, we're having oil tr oil filter difficulties. So I went to Napa, took the part number directly off that, paid like damn near 40 bucks for this. Would you guys shut up? And instantly realized it wasn't gonna work. Now, if you'll notice, somebody has wall drilled this old filter out. This isn't the right filter, what was in it, not at all. And this oil is disgusting. Needed change. Now I went this morning, we dropped Jess's van off the transmission shop to get a service. And I went to an actual Toyota dealership. I took filter housing with me. The Toyota dealership really didn't help me at all. So hopefully, Dustin Sons. They are a regional place, but they saved the day on the van video, and I think they saved the day again. They looked through their books, measured the housing, and I'm thinking this here bald one is going to be what we need. And it was like 10 bucks, Made in the USA. Can you believe it? Yeah, we're going to get this oil filter in it. Hopefully it fits. It's got to be better than it was. And if everything works out, we're going to put some air in that tire, get that ball off the fork, Put our new cheap fork extensions on and see if we can't bend it lifting this nightmare because there's sunday it is now friday the plan is sunday to have a bus here in this mess so hopefully we can pick this car up from the front and put it there hey okay, folks good news bad news the baldwin filter does not quite fit that's the bad news the good news is the toyota dealership called me back and said hey by the way we ended up having three of those filters on our shelves. Why they couldn't have told me that while I was in there earlier, I don't know. Plus, we need to go back to Dustin Sons because I left the uh, number plate off this lovely unit sitting on the counter. I tell you what, I, this has been the biggest fiasco as far as just getting an oil filter in the world. So we're gonna hop in the Jeep. It's, an, it's a nice day, that's what I'm telling myself. Make the 30 mile round trip back to town. And we're gonna go get what we need because we need it and I want this thing to work. Plus, hopefully the Toyota dealership can actually tell me, you know, what year this is, some things about it. So I, you know, I can buy parts in the future. Folks, we are back under the auxiliary shop. Guess what? Why they couldn't just give this to me the first time I was there today. They had to wait till I got home and call me and told me they had three on the shelf. But future Nate, here is your part number. Also, I found out this is a 1972 model, which around here, it's kind of a, she's kind of a youngster, really. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, this is, uh, this is going to be the guy. 
So we're going to put this in, fill this thing up with oil, get it going, and go pick some cars up. All right, here she is, ready to go. Check out her new forks. Big old six-footers. That's locked. Got some fix-a-flat in that there tire. Oh, and it starts with a button. Did I mention that? That's a lot easier. High gear is a little much. So I'm honestly not sure why this thing seized up because it had good oil, good filter. It was making oil pressure. It wasn't overheating. And coming up here real soon is the part where it died, of course, off camera. If you listen closely, coming up right now is the last utterance of the forklift. I really didn't mean to break that one window out, damn it. And it might be on fire. Okay, so the forklift, sorry we ran out of foam storage, but the forklift, was running, got a little warm, and now hopefully the battery's just stone dead and this thing's not locked up, but none of this wants to spin, which leads me to believe it might be seized. Mm. Mm. But it did, it moved a car. It did the thing, I mean, it, you know. Well, I got bad news. It's still got oil in it, so that's good. But I got a wrench down here on this drive. This sucker is seized up tighter than shit. Checked it eight times, it's in neutral. And I mean, it's just... Unless that battery is completely dead and, you know, it's just normally to where you can't move, budge that at all, which doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> I mean, you know, we got it here. It moved a car from right there to right there and then kind of died with a whimper. So I'm going to review the footage. Cause this thing wasn't knocking and it had oil yeah it might have been getting a little warm but it had water in it so but when i first looked at this thing you could spin it over with the loose fan belt and now i can't spin it with a pipe wrench something has gone awry folks remember that forklift that was sitting in this general area and is now missing well it's out back and i think i blew it up I'm waiting for Jess to get here. She doesn't know. I don't even think Bub's aware. Bub, do you know? Have you heard? Okay, we're returning to the scene, folks. Are you excited? It's not good news. So remember this uh, forklift, right? Yeah. You've seen it before? <laughs> yes, I have. Well, 
As you see, it moved and like I was doing stuff with it, right? Right. And it was going real good. Going real good until it wasn't. See, I might have blowed it up. The jury's kind of out on that. So what, but I have one more thing I want to try. Well, two more things. So, uh, I'm so glad you wore your doctor outfit. <laughs> so I was, I was using it, right? It was going along. Everything, was, we were having fun. And then it stopped. And it appears the engine may or may not be locked up. And by that, I mean... This forklift will never run again. <gasps> you just got it. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of, kind of my my thoughts. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I had a theory, right? I, yeah. I'm thinking maybe there's a lot of pressure on that hydraulic pump. There shouldn't be, but maybe there's a lot of pressure on the hydraulic pump, and maybe the battery is just dead. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. So what we're gonna do we're gonna hook the Jeep to it. It's a neutral. Before I let, I don't want to let it down because if it is in fact locked up, it, I don't want it stuck in this car forever. So we're going to pull it backwards, drop it down, take all the pressure off, put a battery in it. And, uh, you know, see what the deal is. So yeah, like I said, we were just, we were going along. Just, this was its first job on the ranch. It was doing a phenomenal job. And then it wasn't. So, uh, like I said, trying to stay positive here. Maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe it's just a fluke, you know, just a sad series of events. Maybe, I don't know. It's a neutral, but I'll double check. Okay, so the, the plan is I'm just going to pull it out until the forks are not in the bug. <laughs> oh, and I busted out the window on the bug that I didn't think about it at the time. I didn't realize I needed that window. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't think I bent these. So, I'm, well, I bent this one, but not bad, bad. I'm going to go ahead and remove those because we paid... You did, remember the five hour ride in the Jeep in the dark and the cold to mm -hmm. Indiana to buy these for this? Might be able to get our 150 bucks back or at least a hundred of it, maybe. Those are kind of wimpy ones. So now, like I said, it shouldn't be like this, but I'm hoping that once I let it down, which now it's really in the way, tell you what. Let me pull a little further. spinning though because it is it is neutral i mean but that tire's they, moving it's just the other one yeah you'll have that on this big job watch, your, like watch your toes so maybe just maybe it had pressure on it and that wasn't allowing it to uh you know do stuff it's first job too the very first one and oh. it was doing it was doing really good like I was thinking in my head of all the other stuff I was going to be doing with this today. Ironically enough, this is the battery that was in that beetle. Hmm. 
You like a good irony. Anyway. So yeah, she was doing really good until it was not. And I just don't get good feelings. The fact that wheel's not spinning and it's a neutral. Unless it's somehow, I don't know. Let's just see, shall we? All right. <laughs> All the pressure's off, clutch is in. And like I said, when we first picked this thing up, you could literally spin that whole drive unit down there by hand. So we're like, you know, 500 bucks for a nice yard ornament. I don't <laughs> I mean, there's no point in being upset about it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose when you buy the cheapest garbage you can find. Upset. I know, Bub is not. Bubby, as you say So I might come out here tomorrow and put something down the cylinders, take the plugs out and do that, but I really just don't. Because that was a loose old engine. Like, it should still move. Maybe, maybe it was the oil filter situation, like being run for years with clearly used oil and the same oil and the wrong filter. Maybe I messed up by changing it. I should have probably just left it alone. Ran it. I tried to do the right thing. She's done, she's done so. Disassemble. Uh, worst case scenario, you'll be seeing it sitting right here in future videos forever. Uh, it's probably got a decent hydraulic pump and some hydraulic controls. I'll at least make a log splitter out of it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> 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 that is uh, going to wrap up the uh, $400 forklift episode and it just sucks because I had so much other shit to move with this mainly the engines out of your kitchen <laughs> but I still have a plan Okay. and it's what is it Friday today Friday mm -hmm. day Sunday we're doing the bus the bus extraction and I have a plan to move the 59 whether this is playing or not or not but i think right now as it, as it sits this is net we're never gonna have to mess with this piece of junk piece of goodness again thank you folks for watching there's a ton of new people thank you all welcome aboard you know i'm nate this is jess this is the dog this was the forklift uh this is kind of the, the junk place the place of junks. Comment down below. What are your thoughts? They said Toyotas are good. I'm not saying they're not, but I'm the one that we definitely picked a shit a shit one. So with that, really. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh...